Hey everyone, it's now 31st December, this is the last day of my 6 month uh, CJK challenge. What I'm uh, doing now is I, I'll be going to take this practice test to really see how much that I've learned uh, during this 6 months. So I, I say 6 months but I've only really been properly studying for the last few weeks and the rest of that time I've just been consuming content, right? So actually quite nervous, I'm not sure how well I'll do. I'm also in, in the middle of my kitchen by the way because there's the only place with good lighting at my house right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go take the test. Uh, kind of nervous, hoping it'll go well, but uh, I'll see you all in a bit. Hey, what's up? So today is the 5th of January, so it's officially five days after I finish my CJK challenge. Basically, the CJK challenge is uh, a self-imposed challenge where I try to study as much Japanese and Korean as possible. So starting from the 1st of July, I will be spending six months to try and learn as much Japanese and Korean as I can. So I already speak uh, Mandarin pretty fluently. So uh, yeah, I was really trying to just complete the set of uh, C, J, and K. So Chinese, Japanese, then Korean. So uh, yeah, in my previous update on the 20th of December, I had actually finished the N5 of the JLPT. So the JLPT is this uh, Japanese language proficiency test where N5 is the lowest and N1 is the highest. So I had finished the N5 and I had done pretty well. So from 20th of December, my goal was to actually get uh, two more levels. So by 31st December, I wanted to get past N3. Uh, so it was quite ambitious, yeah. But at the same time, I have been spending the last uh, five months really just doing a lot of language immersion, just, uh, you know, listening to a lot of Japanese uh, music every day and watching shows. So at first, I gave myself one week to get to the N4 level. The good news is I finished it in about four days. So by the 24th of December, Christmas Eve, I had in fact done this self-administered mock test for the N4 and I have passed it. I think I only did the written part, so I skipped the listening part, but even just from the written part, I had enough points to pass. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as long as I hit the minimum for listening, it was a very easy pass for me. So I'm pl pretty pleased with that. Yeah, and uh, it was kind of expected because I estimated myself to be about N4 level even before starting the CJK challenge. So the real challenge is going from N4 to N3. So since I finished the N4 on the 24th December, I had about a week until the end of the year to really get to N3. What did I do uh, to really get there? So I do have this textbook, which I was somewhat working through, and then I got bored very quickly. So I just ended up grinding uh, vocabulary flashcards on this app. So it's actually a Chinese app called Hujiang Kai Xin Ci Chang. The great thing about this app is that because Japanese shares so many characters from Mandarin, from Chinese, it's actually a lot easier for me to do flashcards in Chinese to uh, learn Japanese. Because the, the foreign, the Japanese vocabulary, it, it just connects so easily to Chinese that it's easier to learn it uh, in Chinese in the first place for me. For the new vocabulary, they do come with example sentences and it is extremely important to learn vocabulary in context. What I did for, for my reviews is first I just learned, uh, connected the word to the meaning and afterwards, once I'm more familiar with them, I set this mode where uh, the reviews are where they give you an example sentence with a, with a blank and you're supposed to choose the option that best fills in this sentence. There's a kind of practice that is more useful than just uh, associating the word itself with the meaning. Because there are many synonyms, there are many words with the same meaning, but they can't always be used in the same context. Different words have different connotations or contours of meaning, right? So I think it's really just best to, to uh, have example sentences when you're studying vocabulary. That's really what I did. Uh, and in fact, it, it wasn't that intensive. 
So I know I know it's very popular for people to use Anki, uh, the space repetition software to remember Japanese vocabulary. Personally, I think Anki is a bit overkill because you don't need to have so many revisions to really drill it in your brain. I think that these flashcards are most useful first as a kind of uh, initial exposure to the vocabulary and maybe occasional reviews, yes, but you don't need to do the whole uh, Anki amount of repetition. So for me, I really just used uh, this app, this uh, Hujiang Kaixin Chang to uh, learn new vocabulary. And uh, I, I reviewed it a bit, but it wasn't that intensive. Anyway, for uh, my N4, I can say that I was mostly carried by my vocabulary. I mean, the N4 grammar isn't too difficult, but yeah, really just my, my knowledge of the the Hanzi and the Kanji really carried me <laughs> a very long way. My, my CJK method really <laughs> goes a long way. Yeah. So from the 24th of December to uh, 31st, I had really a week. So I did continue uh, just grinding uh, on my flashcard app, uh, maybe for one to two hours a day. And then uh, I did try reading some grammar, but not much was going in at that point because I knew that the timeline was so short and really for me to get a strong basis of the grammar is quite unlikely to do it within a week. So I was being a bit strategic with this test. I knew that the vocabulary would get me a very long way. And also I know that my listening is very good because I've been doing a lot of immersion over these last five months. Most of my immersion was through Japanese music. So I think I have a pretty strong uh, listening skills. So I, I can pick up what is being said, even though I don't really understand all the grammatical nuances. So for that, I really did just focus on just getting more vocabulary instead of grammar. I was honestly very worried about this N3. Like I did feel very unprepared. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so time for my actual results. To pass, you actually need uh, 95 out of 180 points. So it's not a super stringent criteria by any means. And within the three sections, so that's uh, vocabulary slash grammar, reading, and listening, in each of these sections, you need at least 19 points out of 60. Yeah, you can tell if you add up all 19 points, you only need 57 points uh, for the bare minimum, but to pass the test as a whole, you need 95 points. So uh, yeah, if you do have uh, one section where you do very well, um, you still do uh, need a minimum for the other ones. And altogether, it still needs to be uh, 95 points total. So for uh, my vocabulary, so this is definitely the strongest part. I got 27 questions out of 35, right? So that becomes 46.3 points out of 60. So that's uh, really good. So I think this is the one that really carried me. And then for my reading, I had 18 out of 39. So that's about 27.7 out of 60. So it's not great, but uh, past the bare minimum, yeah. And then finally, for listening, I had 15 out of 27. So that's about 33.3 over 60. And so if you add all three sections together, we have 116 out of 180. So that is a pass. It's not a great pass by any means, but uh, yeah, still a pass. So yeah, pretty happy with it. Um, I mean, I know it's not great and there's a lot for me to learn, but yeah, honestly, it, it's quite something considering uh, that I really didn't have much time to do studying these uh, few months. And it turns out I finished this even earlier than I expected. So I did this test on the 28th of December. So because I still had three more days in the CJK challenge, I ended up doing the Korean topic exam as well. So the topic uh, exam is the test of proficiency in Korean. And what it is, is essentially there are two levels. There's a uh, topic one and topic two. So topic one, uh, you can get level one and two. So it's the same test, but depending on how high you score, you can get top uh, level one or two. And then for topic two, it's, uh, it's one test as well, but there you can get level three, four, and five. Because I didn't actually study much Korean, I just focused on topic one. And 
I managed to get, and so for topic one, it's out of 200 points, and there are two sections. The first section is reading, and for that, I have 92 out of 100. So for the second section, listening, I got 24 questions right out of 30 questions. So that's 80 out of 100. And so altogether, I had 172 out of 200. So within topic one, if you get 80 points out of 200, you will become uh, level one. If you have 140 points out of 200, you are at level two. My score is 172. So I am, I think, yeah, definitely level two. That's pretty nice, and I think my Korean also did improve quite a bit uh, just by watching Korean videos on YouTube for the last five months. So I guess what are my takeaways from this? Firstly, uh, it really is quite shocking how much you can learn even without putting in too much effort. It doesn't mean you just do nothing, right? But the way I really went about it is I just ended up incorporating more Japanese and Korean content in my life, and so it's immersion, right? That's what everyone says, you need immersion. But you can do it in a way that is quite comfortable. Yeah, you can do it without really changing too much in your life. I actually didn't spend too much like mental energy thinking about how to, you know, I need to immerse myself for so many hours a day or things like that. I just, <laughs> I really just went about my life and gradually tried to incorporate more Japanese and Korean media. It was quite a pleasant process. I barely even noticed it happening. For people who are really serious and who really want to get their language level up in as short a time as possible, I can see why you would uh, really be more deliberate and structured about this. But I think for people who don't have that time pressure, it is probably more sustainable to do it in a way that just requires less effort overall. I mean, of course, I do have a pretty big advantage being fluent in Chinese. And I guess this is really a testament to just how much transfer there is between Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Not to plug my method too much, but I do think it's pretty obvious that, uh, yeah, it is a good way to go about it. And yeah, I, I do hope that uh, in the upcoming year, I'll be able to just make more content for all of you, especially for those who are not yet fluent in any of the three. Thank you for sticking with me, uh, watching this video, and for supporting this channel. Please do comment if you have any ideas on what kind of content you would like me to do uh, for this year. I should have more time now that graduate school applications are ending, but at the same time, I need to manage graduation and possibly finding a job. Anyway, I will try my best. I do hope that all of you enjoy your language learning process and that you have a great year ahead. Okay, thanks and see you all. Bye-bye.